MCU fans, DCEU fans, and all in all entertainment fans, welcome back to another segment of This Week in News here at Murphy's Multiverse. I'm your host, Tyler Moulton, and we've got a lot of important stories to undress here. And trust me, we'll do it way better than this. And flick. Oh, flick too hard, damn it! This week, we were introduced with a wild Thor Love and Thunder official trailer, and if you haven't seen it yet, Charles V did a nice trailer reaction on this one. And one of the most interesting shots to pause at is this. Charles Murphy wrote up a great article on this as it shows us multiple busts that include Mistress Death, Eon, Infinity, Uatu, The Watcher, and also The Living Tribunal. This just goes to show the amount of possible potential for the inclusion of some of Marvel's major cosmic entities. Another MC MCU project making headlines was Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Earlier this week, rumors started to swirl at a possible first look of Namor the Submariner. As you can see, at B Panther News shows the new blurred out photo via the Den of Nerds. Now I know it's difficult to make out here with the photo being blurred, but the design does seem to strongly resemble Namor's original costume design with those green trunks. The Wakanda Forever cast and crew were also lucky to get some rap gifts that include a hoodie and a hat that both feature Tipe Tlotl, the Aztec Jaguar God. Which this is really cool because previous rumors have suggested that the designs of Namor and the Atlanteans will be based off the historical Aztec slash Mayan culture. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Now, Miss Marvel is creeping up on us quickly, and for those who are anticipating this series, this next bit of news is super important. It was announced this week that a documentary special for Miss Marvel is set to release ahead of that June 8 Disney Plus premiere. The documentary short will be called A Fan's Guide to Miss Marvel and is currently eyeing a June 1st release. So make sure to look out for that. Also, the runtime for the first two episodes was revealed this week. The first one will clock in at 47 minutes long with the sequel running for two minutes longer than that. And remember folks that this time does include those credits. Are you kidding me? No. Are you serious? As everyone got a chance to see the She-Hulk trailer just come out, you may have also seen many people on Twitter and other outlets complaining about the clunky CGI. Well, those voices were certainly heard. On Disney+, Plus, you can find a new updated She-Hulk trailer that basically only improves the CG. Check out these comparisons from the direct, you can see a little more texture being added onto She-Hulk. Other MCU updates we also saw this week were from Echo and Ironheart. The Echo head writer shared a set photo with the first look at a new logo. And it was also rumored earlier this week that the Ironheart series may have already started filming in Chicago. Switching gear years over to the DCEU, it seems like things have been somewhat quiet lately. But don't worry because the Blue Beetle and the Flash completely went off. Early in the week, a rumor started to form that Jason Sudeikis was set to play as Ted Kord. But not too long after, Umberto Gonzalez from The Rap confirmed that the rumor is not true, and to further confirm that Sudeikis is not even in the movie at all. But on the bright side, we did get leaked set photos and a leaked video from the set of Blue Beetle. You can see Zolo Marina is suited up and ready to shoot. Also with a scene where he appears to fall landing on a vehicle and the leaked video provided by Daily Mail shows the aftermath of that fall. When it comes to the Flash's new suit, it was spotted at the Las Vegas Licensing Expo. And as you can see, it is also joined by Supergirl's suit as well. Now, if it's anyone's lucky weekend coming up here, it would definitely be for Star Wars fans. A limited series Obi-Wan Kenobi will tee off this weekend and by the time you're watching this video right now, you may have already seen this series. Regardless, Ewan McGregor had some interesting thoughts on doing a second season. He said, yeah, I would like to make another one. I had such a great time working with Deb and the actors that we had in this were great to work with and the crew are just I can't tell you. It was so wonderful to work on. I couldn't wait to get to work every day and on a long shoot like this, that's something. Right to the end, I just love the experience of it. Star Wars fans will also be excited to know that the series Acolyte got some updates as we learn new information that the series takes place long before the prequel trilogy with around 100 years stated. And this project will mainly be exploring the rise of the Sith during the High Republic. One of the most cool things about the Acolyte is that the 
film will take a lot of inspiration from martial arts movies during the creative process. When it comes to other popular updates that are happening in the entertainment industry, we found out that Sony is developing a Horizon and Gran Turismo TV series. So far, there is still no word on how far along these projects are. But for Cobra Kai, they are looking to create a bigger and badder season 5 by adding a new sensei to the mix. This character will be a South Korean sensei named Kim Dayun and be played by Alicia Han Kim. A new big name has just joined Chris Pratt in his upcoming Garfield movie, and that is the name of Samuel L. Jackson, who is said to be playing the iconic Cat's father. Last but not least, J.J. Abrams has been announced to be executive producer of a live-action adaptation of Speed Racer. This upcoming series will be heading to Apple. Now that is the news for this week. Don't forget to comment in the comment section below what your favorite piece of news was. We do this every single week, so you want to make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell and I want to thank you for watching this video and as always we'll see you next week.